Hey everyone, Tanner Bell here. Welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you tips for quitting your job to be a full-time crafter. I am so excited to talk towards this because I've been able to mentor, work with, and teach thousands of creatives just like yourself to be able to add in a, either a side hustle or turn their handmade business into their full-time job over the last decade. I'm so excited to share these tips with you. So if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, stay subscribed to master your Cricut machine and master selling your handmade crafts. If you guys are brand new to our YouTube channel, I'm Tanner, the founder here at Makers Gonna Learn, where we teach you how to master your die cutting machine and teach you how to build that handmade business you always have wanted to. And I started my journey over a decade ago by using my Cricut machine, selling my crafts, and long story short, a decade later, I'm here teaching others how to do it too. So in today's video, I wanna talk to the ones that are out there that are really taking an actual approach to quit their job and take action in building their business before they do so. I'm gonna share with you today some tips to get started in planning what that's gonna look like for you to quit your job and actually be self-employed. It is a totally different world than working a nine to five and working for someone else. So I wanna go over some of my best tips for getting started in your side hustle. Let's go ahead and jump right into it with number one, being you need to get started with your side hustle before you actually quit your job. Why would you want to jump ship and have nothing to jump onto? You know what I mean? You need to have something that is stable for you to pivot from while you're still building your business. So while you're still collecting a check and working your nine to five, it is a great time to spend your evenings, your weekends, working on building other revenue streams so that when you're ready to have that quit day, you are gonna be able to jump and feel stable when you pivot. The thought of pivoting can be so overwhelming and so scary because I know a lot of you are creatures of habit. A lot of us do not wanna get into an uncomfortable state, so I wanna help you all plan your quit day. That's actually tip number two, and it's planning your quit day. And what that looks like is taking an assessment of how much it's actually going to cost you to manage your bills, manage any expense that you cannot take away, or you cannot you know, try to budget down to. Because a lot of times what people tell me time and time again is, Tanner, I have to hit this much in income even to think about quitting my job to pay a lot of my bills. So when I like to think about planning your quit day, I like to think about what it would look like if you didn't have your job. What expenses could you cut out for a short time? What type of uncomfortable state are you willing to put yourself into so that you're willing to get to your end goal, which could be working for yourself, having flexible hours, having a diversified income stream of different products, and so much more. So as you plan that, you need to plan what it's going to look like financially for you to be able to quit, and you wanna put a number there. So for example, you could say, I need three months of consistent income before I would even consider quitting my job. For some, it might be six months. It really, it has to be whatever you feel comfortable enough committing to, all right? So once you have the number and the timeline of consistent months, I would recommend focusing on consistent. Our goal here is to get you consistency because you're not going to get a check every two weeks anymore or every week. You're going to have to start building that in a different way with your side hustle. After you've got an idea of what your quit day looks like, how much money it's going to take to get there, I want you to start planning some of your ideal income streams. And the best part about this is you can make money however you want to in this world. So I really want you to be intentional with thinking about how you would like to earn your revenue. How many products are you offering? How many orders are you accepting? How many custom projects you're working on? And things like that. What I wanna let you guys know as well is this isn't something that you have to have perfect in the beginning. I want you to just get started. I'm more so after you all taking action and get started and letting this become a perfecting process, becoming something you're working on constantly than something that you're going to have to commit to um, for the next decade. 
that's not how running your own business is going to work. What is going to happen is you're going to get started and as you work with customers and as you explore and learn, you're going to pivot. One day you may add a service and another day you might realize that's not serving your business anymore and you actually have to cancel a program or a service that you at one time offered. And sometimes that is what is actually really scary is taking action and pivoting. But I really just want you to get started in planning what your ideal plan looks like today, but not feeling overwhelmed that you have to commit to it for a lifetime. The next big pivotal moment I want you to start thinking about is constantly being in a productive state. Remember, when you're self-employed, you are driving the boat. You are in control of creating outcomes for yourself. There's not gonna be anyone behind you holding yourself accountable. There's not anyone out there that you are reporting to. You are in charge of creating your own outcomes. So you want to stay in a productive, proactive state. You do not want to be thinking about being in a passive state because you're wanting to be the innovator now. You're the one that needs to stay on top of trends, test out new products, and so much more in your business. So I want you to really own that for yourself and your business so you can create outcomes and build success really fast. One way I like to look at this is to focus on tasks that create outcomes. Be sure not to get in a place where you are just working on certain tasks that are not creating a desired outcome. For example, a great way to do this in the beginning is only working on things that are moving the needle forward in adding new customers, helping fulfill orders, anything that is on your to-do list that is not a direct result of creating revenue or adding customers, you may not need to work on as much. That should be more of a second or third priority rather than focusing solely on building that customer base. So really focus on you know any task and say, is this serving my customer? Is this helping me grow my business? And if the answer is no, let's not worry about that because I see a lot of us get in an issue of making doing Instagram stories their only job, for example. And truthfully, doing Instagram story is only one part of your marketing plan and that's only speaking to existing followers. So that's just one thing that I've seen business owners fall into is making that feel like a top priority, but really they need to diversify that working in their business in a multitude of ways. This next one is one I really believe in, and that is put yourself in strategic, uncomfortable places to create outcomes for yourself. And what that could look like guys could be committing to ordering 10 t-shirts and just looking at those 10 t-shirts every day, just so you know and you're aware that you need to create those customers to fulfill those orders. Believe it or not, we've had quite a few students that have seen results using this technique. On a coaching call, we got to see um, a student of ours named Kirsten, and she was so tied up in taking that next step in her business that we coached her and she really just needed to order the shirts and say, if I get these customers or not, I'm still a business owner. But after that, she was able to start showing up like a business owner that was ready to fulfill orders. So believe it or not, when you commit financially to something, when you see it in your day to day, every single day that you are a business owner, you are going to start seeing results in how you show up and how you put yourself out there. To recap this, I really want you guys to hit home and know that you may have only had one customer, but for example, you had 10 shirts. The point here is that you're building momentum and you're really allowing yourself to know that you need to get out there and start growing your business. You need to find other people that are willing to commit to purchasing shirts. And what I want you all to really know is this is going to look different for every single one of us. Whatever is holding you back could actually be the thing to move you forward. So I want you to start thinking about what strategic risk can you take to really push yourself to work the hardest because being self-employed and and being a business owner is not easy. All right, my friends, I want you to know that you are the one that are having to push yourself 
every single day. So start thinking what strategic risk could I take to push myself to level up my business? Okay, my friends, I can feel that there are some people here watching this video that are actually already at the state where they're like, Tanner, I have a thriving side hustle. I know I could do this full time if I had more time. And my friends, for those of you that are here today, I wanna to encourage you to take the leap. There is never a good time to start a business, whether there's things going on in the world, the economy, your personal life, you wanna feel healthier, you want more time with your kids, anything like that, there's never a perfect time to start your business. So what that looks like is after you've done the pre-planning, you've done the hard work, there's gonna be a time that you have to either say, I'm going all in or I'm going to stop. And what I wanna encourage you to do is to take the leap. I want you to use a technique that I call fear setting and I want you to write down what is the worst thing that could happen if you take action today. If you say yes to going all in on your business, and let's say in two months you're scared it's going to fail. Write that down and tell yourself what you would do if it failed. What write down? Would you go back to your nine to five? Would you find a better nine to five? Would it open you up to more opportunity in a way you don't even know? Make that feel really real and write out what is the worst thing that could happen. But here's the kicker. After you do that scary exercise, I want you to flip the script. I want you to flip the script today and I want you to write down what would happen if everything went perfectly and maybe even better than you could even think today. What if your business was double the size that you think it ever could be? You may be here today saying, Tanner, I could never make X, Y, and Z a month doing crafts, but I think you can, my friend. So I want you to also write down what would happen if everything went smooth, if everything was perfect and how you would show up every day to achieve that result. And that way you have a plan, whichever way you feel comfortable and you're gonna see that if you fail, it's not as scary as it looks like and you have way more upside if you take action and build a business that you love. As we're wrapping up today's video, I want to make sure that we hit on one core topic that seems to be a pain point for any business owner that is looking to get started. And that's actually trying to talk about their business with their friends and family. As you've qualified these people to be close acquaintances, colleagues, friends, you know, fellow family members, you would think these are the number one people that are gonna be in your corner to take action in your business. But believe it or not, I've found that these are, are the people that are wanting you to play it safe. These are the people that want you to be in a safe place, that are going to want to be a little bit more passive and take less risk because they don't really understand the reward. So I want you to be okay with understanding your friends and family are probably not your number one supporters. They're not the people that are going to be there and push you the most. And that's why this sounds crazy, but I don't talk about my business a lot with friends and family, especially when I'm starting a new one, because they are the ones that I've found to cause me to have a little bit more fear and make me second guess myself. Though you wanna take their advice and understand it's coming from a place that they wanna keep you safe and cared for, you also need to know that is a place where you can start fearing your own thoughts and fearing that you actually can't do this because my friend what you need the most is undeniable faith that you can do it and the thing is if there's even one person you can identify that has done it before you we are all pretty much the same so you can take everything that you know and do it again replicate a business because i know you all are watching this video today that means you're trying to get as much knowledge as possible and there's so much knowledge here on the internet for you to gain and experience for you to be had. So if you can see another business owner out there rocking it and crushing it, know that you can do the exact same thing in your industry, in your niche, in your area, and I believe in you for you to take extreme, extraordinary action today. My friends, I love this video. I'm so excited for all the people out there that are ready to start planning their quit days. I wanna encourage you to plan it out. Make it as detailed as possible. Put a date to it that you want to quit by. I'm so excited for you guys. And if you're getting excited to start your own handmade business, 
I have five secrets to share with you about making money using your Cricut machine, even if you haven't sold before. That is a free webinar, it's linked down below. I have a show up live bonus, you can watch the recording, and you can learn more about our amazing program, Design, Make, Sell. If you've never heard of any of those, check it out, the first link down below, get registered. If you haven't checked out um, our YouTube channel, we have a ton of more videos like this, so I'll try to link some down below too. Give the video a thumbs up if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, my friends.